Welcome back everybody to Founders Corner. Today I have a very exciting guest with, uh, with her baby. So if you do hear baby sounds in the background, that's her baby. Um, but her name is Una and she is a very close friend of mine again, as usual. I'm bringing my, uh, my greatest friends on this podcast. And we are going to be talking about mental health and just how it feels like being an entrepreneur. Una's background is psychology, so I, I'm very excited for her to bring on some, uh, you know, maybe some technical terms, if not at least her perspective, which is going to be amazing to have um, in our little podcast going forward. So Una, welcome. How are you doing? Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Thank You're you for that welcome. beautiful introduction. You're very welcome. So this is weird for you because we're friends. Yeah. Um, but uh, I always love our conversations. Mm. So anytime we get into conversations, I'm always like, wait, 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 this is a podcast <laughs> moment. So that kind of happened to us today. Yeah. So Una, why don't you give us a little background on yourself? Like wh- who is Una? Mm. <laughs> That's a long one. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess ever since I can remember, I've always been interested in like why people do what they do, mm-hmm. how humans think since I was a little kid. And then obviously kind of growing up and starting to think about like what kind of what kind of career path do I want psychology just kind of worked worked. its way yeah yeah and then I think there was that piece and then also things just kind of um, happened naturally where I grew up and I had a neighbor who was kind of working in within like mental health fields and working with kids with autism and all that so then I started there at a really young age around like 15 just working with kids with autism, Mm -hmm. ADHD, behavioral issues, that sort of thing. And then as I grad, I did that all through high school, graduated, went to go get my psych degree, ended up then just doing a bunch of different, kind of jumping around a little bit as I was younger and like addiction, not not addiction with me. Yeah, (laughs) but learning about addiction, yeah. Yeah, and um, like working with like the homeless population and then transitioning to like domestic violence and then back to children. And so I just, yeah, kind of wanting to see how mental health affects different kind of sectors of our society. And it's always, and I guess now motherhood too is a big one for me because I don't think you really hear about that. I was going to say, so uh, Una actually has her own TikTok channel on uh, motherhood. Yeah. And and I have to say, and I've told you this myself, so I'm really just saying it to the podcast, but you are probably one of the most well-read and most intelligent mothers I've ever met. And and like we have, uh, you know, a bunch of our friends are coming through with with having kids and and you're so well-prepared in terms of like, like really taking in that aspect of reality mm-hmm. and psychology and kind of combining it and really making that your own. I would say you're, you're a mother entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate that because, yeah, motherhood was a huge uh, shock in terms of like how prepared I thought I was versus how prepared I actually was. Yeah. And then, yeah, just well, dove Well, it's funny. A that. lot of entrepreneurs always refer to their company as their babies. Mm-hmm. You literally have made your babies your your business, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's amazing. I love that. If I, I've told Una multiple times, if uh, if I ever have kids or when I have kids, uh, I, I need her to write a book, <laughs> step by step. <laughs> so maybe that's your next play here. Um, so Una, like you've gone through multiple businesses, ideas as mm-hmm. hobbies. That right. being said, um, what would you say was the biggest challenge for you as in terms of just mentally, um, when you mm-hmm. engage in those business ideas? I think the biggest, so I always started everything as just like a hobby, mm-hmm. mostly because I'm just a busy body. So it's a good yeah, and bad thing. you love thing. staying busy. Yeah, so it's like, you know, if I feel like there's certain parts of my life that are not busy, mm-hmm. I feel like I have to fill them. Yeah. It's probably like a trauma response, to be honest. <laughs> Only you <laughs> would be able to say that. But we can go into that another time. But that is, that's just how I am, and it is what it is. And so, yeah, a lot of these kind of ideas that I have will start off as just hobbies. And then it will kind of get to a point where it's like, okay, am I willing to kind of, you know, make this more than just a hobby and right. actually put in the time of, like, staying up late to do right. this or 
spending a whole day you know on this idea or not spending as much time with my kids or with family or missing dinners or whatever kind of when you're at that point of like okay it's a hobby and it's going to transition into something more I've never been at the place where I've been willing to or sacrifice. able yeah to say okay I'm willing to take that jump and so I've always kind of stopped at that point um, where I'm like no I'm either just going to continue this as a hobby or I'm just not going to do it anymore right because okay. I would say like being an entrepreneur is quite a lonely place. Mm. Um, at least that's how I find it. And most startups or even founders I talk to, they're like the communication is relatively the same. It's right. very lonely world. Um, you have a lot of people you have to fight against, uh, and that includes your internal friends. Yeah. Right. And so I love that you said that where you realize it's about to become a bigger thing. You kind of step back. Yeah. Is that because of you knowing? what kind of, what, what, what you have to give up for it? Um, I think that's a piece of it. And maybe another piece as well is, I think when things are a hobby, it's just a hobby, right? Like yeah. you can stop tomorrow and nobody's going to look at you and, and think joy. that you failed. Yes. But once you kind of take that step into making it, I don't know, like, a, a I don't want to say a career because that's not the right a term. Business. but. Yeah, like actually making it a business and, you know, sacrificing things for it. I feel like all of a sudden you have this added pressure of uh -huh. you can't fail anymore because, you know, you're sacrificing sleep and you're sacrificing time with your kids or with your family Sorry. or those dinners where, you know, you should be at someone's birthday dinner, but you're not because you're working on your business. And so all of a sudden there's just this pressure of now I can't fail anymore. That's a very good point. That's actually probably why most people turn from passion and like hobbies and like, I love doing this, so I'm going to make it a business. And then yeah. all of a sudden they hate it. Right. And it's strictly, I think, I love what you said. It's, it's literally the transition between, um, you know, it's fun for me. No one relies right. on this. This is just the thing. Yeah. To all of a sudden, there's a huge cost to making this yeah. a, a bigger thing. Yeah. And then you have that pressure. And then I think kind of, you know, where I'm sure you've had like, you know, naysayers or people who Always. don't support you and all that. Mm -hmm. I feel like when it's in that hobby phase, your friends and your family, you know, it's, it's like, oh, whatever. there's Una's hobby. Yeah. Like, you know, she's a busybody, whatever. But then again, when it transitions to that kind of business piece, then it's all of a sudden your friends are, you know, talking about you and mm -hmm. people on, you know, a, a lot of businesses these days, as, as you guys know, are on social media. So yep. then it's people are like sharing your videos and like yep. talking crap about you. Mm -hmm. And then your family's like, what are you doing? Get a real job. Yep. And then all of a sudden, you know, all these people that you care about and that you love are not as supportive anymore as they were when this was a hobby or yeah. I mean I'm sure there's some people who it's like all, their family and friends are 100% supportive but I'm sure for a lot of people I would say no like matter that. what you're gonna have the naysayers I mean that's just the reality of being a founder um, because you have to truly prove it to others mm -hmm. that you've made it um, yeah. not that you need to prove it to them it's more proving it to yourself that's just a bonus in my opinion but I think like one thing I've been blessed with is my family supports me. Mm. Um, and I've started like three or four ventures. I've worked with start startups. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've been there. And, you know, one of them was very successful, one of them not so successful. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I always have my family supporting me. And right. thankfully, in today's world, my wife supports me. And I think really, you need to really surround yourself with that, that support because it's like I said, when you're in a lonely place already, yeah. being more isolated from family and friends, the people you rely on, the people you kind of like lean on when you need them the most, right. if they're not supportive, I honestly like that's a tough transition for any person to become a founder. Yeah. And I think when you struggle, because every person will struggle, especially, yeah. oh. you know, like business founders and all that that's when you want to be able to kind of lean on family and friends. And if you're not really, a like, you know, if you're going through a hard time and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to continue this, you know, it's been really hard the last couple of months or mm -hmm. whatever. If you're going to have family and friends around you who are like, yeah, it's not working out. You should just stop. Yeah. Cause you're already in your own head 
You're you know? already thinking it. Yeah. yeah. And then sometimes it's really those outside voices that are going to make or break what you're yes. going to do. Because if you're already in such a vulnerable spot, it's sometimes just, especially a lot of times like family or close friends, like it just takes that one moment of like your dad saying like, you got maybe, this. or saying, maybe this isn't for you. Yes. And for you to just be like, you're right. And, and then it is a breaking it. point. You're or right. your dad or mom or close friends being like, no, keep going. You know, you can yeah. do this. It's just a whatever. Give it one more month. Give yeah. it one more month. Give it one more month. That's all you need to just keep going. Yeah. And, and honestly, that has to me, and I just keep speaking to myself because, I mean, like that's the most genuine I can be. Because um, I can't ever guess these founders' emotions, right? No, that's the biggest thing about founders too, or like what the aura around entrepreneurs is, is, is if you fail, go in secret, right? Don't make right. sure no one finds out that you failed. Um, if you succeed, be as loud as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And you don't really hear the stories of, like you'll hear stories where people are like, oh my God, this guy came out of nowhere. But right. little do they know, it's been 10 years running. Right. Right. This guy has worked his ass off for 10 years before he reached that level of, you know, celebrity status, let's call it. Right. Um, in, the, in the founders world and, and startups today and founders, what I noticed today are like, how do I get rich tomorrow? Like, mm -hmm. how do I get that celebrity status tomorrow? And it's like, that's, you're 22, 23, 24, whatever. You're young, you're 20s and you're expecting to hit that. Like, that will happen maybe... Yeah. one percent right right but like the rest of them they'll yeah. become successful at 35 40 after years of yeah. hard work and like really tuning in that grit and like understanding what they have to sacrifice and do yeah. and they really surround themselves with those people right so psychologically i think as a founder you need to be prepared for that yeah yeah that i think that i i mean i think one of the positive things that came out of the pandemic <laughs> yes the blimp we call it the blimp around here <laughs> is that people everybody was isolated for a really mm -hmm. long time for the most part and people really started to recognize how important it is to not isolate yourself yes and how important relationships are and being social is and having connections with people and so i think you know before someone like you could be like oh yeah it's you know it's really isolating going through this and people would be like eh, whatever like yeah. can't be that bad yeah and not the you know the pandemic is the same but it's There's kind no of, empathy you're totally right yeah it's yeah. given people a glimpse of like i kind of know a little bit of what isolation feels mm -hmm. like and it wasn't fun and it was really hard so do you think that's what has caused the whole mental health because honestly like if you look the last three, four years, if you ever talked about mental health, you were considered weak. Right. Right? But I would say this year, even last year, mental health has kind of been top of mind, mm -hmm. especially on the business side of things, yeah. right? Where they're like kind of more cautious about that. Do you think it's because of the fact that just because of the isolation, empathy kind of built around it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's been both good and bad in terms of how focused people are on mental health because like you said it used to be really stigmatized and it was kind of like you're seen as weak if you talk about and let's just kind of say kind of these more normal mental health struggles like anxiety and some depression and mm -hmm. kind of things that a lot of people in society deal with but I feel like so yeah I feel like people have been able to talk about it and it's been more accepted especially within like companies and businesses and I mean I don't know what you're kind of morale is around here but i'm assuming if someone Top came notch. to you and was like oh i'm really anxious about this yeah you wouldn't be like oh i gotta fire that person like you'd be like well what's going on let's yes. figure this out how can i support you you know all that sort of stuff so that part's been good but i think the other piece is that people again are so focused on mental health that the second they feel a little bit of anxiety they worry about right. that yes the yeah, second yeah, yeah. they feel a little bit you know sad today for quote unquote no reason they worry about that yeah and then hyper focusing on that just sends them even further into 
feeling sad or feeling anxious where it's like you know anxiety can be a normal feeling especially when you're working within like a business and you have deadlines and this and that mm -hmm. anxiety can be a positive thing too because it can kind of you know you're anxious about that deadline next week and so it's it's on the top of your mind you want yeah. to get good work done you want to talk to people around you all that sort of yeah, stuff yeah i would say for founders most of the time the anxiety comes around the business itself mm -hmm. so the business problems always translates to the founders problems and right. and and you're right anxiety can be a good thing because some people actually thrive under it mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of cases where people take it too personal right right like a failure on the product side is a failure on their side right right and then they go into this i call it the spiral effect of you all of a sudden become a it's like the smothering mother right yeah. um where like you're trying to love it but you're actually like smothering it right right and so that whole aspect of just like you you've been exposed in one little thing and then all of a sudden becomes a domino effect to you feeling like you're overwhelmed, your, anxi your anxiety kicks up, right. um, you feel more lonely than you've ever felt before. Yeah. I can honestly say I have felt that. Right. And it is one of the worst feelings in the world. Like I would, I would actually wake up in the middle of the night sometimes like wanting to throw up. Mm. Not that I actually wanted to throw up, no, but I like you're you. just like, I want to throw up. Like I almost want to throw this anxiety yeah. out of my body. Right, yeah. Well, and I mean, anxiety is so different for people, but a, a lot of times people will say, like, I feel it, like, in my chest, like yes. a weight that's yes. on me. And, and some... when that problem disappears, it's amazing how that affects, it's almost right. like this pressure, right? Yeah. That's crazy. But then, and then you kind of get, fo like, every time you start feeling that, your focus is on, like, how do I just get rid of this yes. as quickly as possible? Instead of sometimes I think leaning into that to be like, okay, you know, this is causing me anxiety right now. And, and I think a lot of times you're not going to be able to get rid of that, right? Like, let's say, whatever, you have this deadline coming up, mm -hmm. you're feeling really anxious about it. You're not going to be able to get rid of that deadline. Yeah. So sometimes just stepping back and, and being like, okay, these are the things that I can't get rid of right now or fix right now that's causing my anxiety, yeah. but what are other things that are kind of stressful in my life that I can offload right now? Yes. So like a small example would be like, I make, you know, I make dinner every night and that is a stress in a sense to my yes. life because then I have to go get groceries mm -hmm. and I have to figure out what meal I'm going to make yep. and get in the kitchen and cook it up and the, this, that, and then the dishes. And the, so it's like, yeah, it only takes maybe an hour, an, an hour, hour and a half. Yep. Right let's say an hour and a half of your day to kind of do all of that but it is top it, of mind it's still yeah. there and it's something that you have to do so then being like okay today i'm not like we're just going to order in today and that's going to be one little stress that's going to be taken off i'm going to give that to someone else to do so yeah. whatever skip the dishes going to yeah, yeah. dinner yeah and that opens up an hour and a half of your day now to again focus on what you need to focus on in terms of like work if that's the best thing for you to do or to be like, now I'm going to use that hour and a half to relax, right? To do my self care, or to whatever, go to the gym if that's what you do, or take a nap, yeah, or whatever it is. Um, so I think just recognizing like what's in your control and what's not in your control. Mm -hmm. And I think as humans, the things that are in our control, mm -hmm. we don't want to focus on them as much because they're in our control. Like we can offload that easily, but it's easy to hyper focus on things that are not in your control yes. because they're not in your control Correct. and you can't stop thinking about it. And the biggest thing about founders is they love control. Mm. They hate losing control because I, I would say the number one issue with, with you know, I, I've noticed this with working with uh, co-founders that are technical and co-founders that are not technical. And the non-technical co-founders tend to be a little bit dominant. Mm. But that's because they have no idea what's happening on the technical side. Right. And because it's out of their control, they're a little more, right. you know, instead, like, like why don't you focus, yeah, yeah, but they don't know what they're micromanaging. Right. Right. So <laughs> it's kind of funny when you see that um, interaction happen because, because realistically, why don't you focus on the business? Why mm -hmm. don't you go try selling some of these? Like mm -hmm. you already have, uh, you already have everything. You already have, why don't you focus on the marketing? Like there's so much that could be done. 
Right. But they hyper focus on the things they can't control. Yeah. You're yeah. totally right on that. Eh? No, and I think that, you know, every, that's almost human nature in a sense. Yeah. Because we want to be able to control everything in our mm -hmm. lives. And when something comes up and we can't, and, you know, kind of to go back to your point of when you, in terms of like motherhood and, and, being a business founder when you say like a lot of people a lot of people that you talk to will say that their business is their baby mm -hmm. and then you know in terms of motherhood it's that piece of you know you're doing something great but when you look at it day to day it sometimes feels like you're not doing anything mm -hmm. like you know it's rep it's like the same thing every day yep. you're repeating a lot of stuff it doesn't feel like a lot gets done and then all of a sudden like for me, let's say with motherhood, you know, it's all that stuff every day. And then all of a sudden your baby starts crawling. Like there's yeah. that, you know, like huge moment. I call it the peak. There's always right. peaks and valleys. Yeah. So the valleys are the worst. The peaks are the best. Right. And yeah. then when you're in that valley, like I like that uh, analogy, when you're in that valley, it, you, that's when you start questioning. You're like, is this important work? Am I really doing anything good here? Yes. Like that's all when that you stuff. doubt yourself the most. Right. And, yeah. you know, with motherhood, that's where you see a lot of moms. And I've been there, too, where it's like, God, what, what am I doing every day? You're like, I'm raising the next generation here. But it really just feels like all I'm doing is, ch you know, changing diapers and feeding <laughs> this baby. Almost and, not effective. Yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden something happens and you, you know, let for the most part, let's say babies start crawling around six months. Then you see all this work that you've done every day for six months. Now it makes sense. And that's why I go back. Grit is so important for business because like you do need to give it time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't give it that time. Like I said, like they're like, how do I become celebrity status in then like two years? Right. It's like, first of all, you developing yourself takes time like a child, yeah. right? Like you have to let the business grow. You got, you also have to get lucky. Yeah. And if you quit too early, you don't have the opportunity to get lucky, yeah. right? So, um, no, I love that because I do believe that moms don't get enough credit right? because it is a business. It is its own, like, little entity that you really yeah. have to focus on and really, you know. I and mean, you and I have talked about this. Yeah. That's a whole episode on its <laughs> own, um, you know. But, but one of the biggest things for me is, as a founder is you really got, you have to give it its time yeah. you have to understand there are going to be peaks and there is going to be valleys uh valleys where you're going to feel you what what have i done in this because yeah. I, I have those moments where i'm like yeah. day to day you're doing all these tasks and you're like i'm not doing anything for the vision right but i mean you have to do those to get to the vision right and i think too um motivation is a huge you know, everybody gets motivated at some point and then you kind of jump into things and you, when you feel motivated, you want to, like, you want to wake up, you want to get it done, mm -hmm. this and that. But, and then people kind of hold on to that motivation and they're like, this is what's going to get me through. Yeah. But what people, I think a lot of times don't realize is motivation comes and goes. Yes. Like it's not the motivation that's going to get you through. It's, all, you know, peop, the way that I, like a example I have is, Back in the day. Yeah, back in the day. <laughs> when yep. I was really busy with a lot Way of stuff. Way to show your age now. No. You're not even <laughs> I, that old. <laughs> That's the best part. No, but when I used to go to the gym every single day, yeah. I used to go at like 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. Because that was the only time I had to go. And like one of my friends would be like, how do you stay so motivated to go to the gym every day when you're so tired and this and that? And I'm like, yeah, there's times that I'm motivated and I'm like, I'm going, I want to work out. This is like part of my lifestyle. This yeah. is and the next thing. But then there will come a time where that motivation is gone. Yes. And like you don't want to wake up anymore and you don't want to whatever, go to the gym that day or you don't want to go to work. You don't want to keep doing this sort of stuff. And continuing to to do what you need to do in those moments is what actually will kind of get you to that next place that you need to be. Yeah. And so I think a lot of times what I see is people just in life in general they're, they hold on to what motivates them in that moment, and that's what they kind of fixate on. Yep. And the second that motivation is, is gone, gone, that interest for whatever they're doing is gone. And whatever, a lot of times that's fine. Again, hobbies, right? If you're not motivated or it's not fun anymore, 
you should stop it. Yeah. But then when it comes to something like a business, you don't want to ride that. You do, you want to ride the wave of motivation because you'll probably get a lot of stuff done during that time. Mm -hmm. But recognizing that that's going to leave at some point, and are you still going to be able to? put in those long hours and wake yep. up early and go to bed late and do all the things that you need to do. Hence why I always say it's a state of mind. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship is a state of mind. You can't just be like, I have an idea and here's why I think I'm going to make money. Money is never a long lasting motivator. Um, I think I think what you, do you love think to do. Do you think so? I do believe that. I do believe that you need to move beyond money. It has to be your why you exist in order to survive long term. But do you think, because I love listening to podcasts. Okay. And I've heard and a lot of- And you listen to Founders Corner all the time. <laughs> absolutely, I do. <laughs> yeah, Founders Corner, I, I absolutely listen to that. Oh, thank you for that shameless Very plug. Very <laughs> well done podcast. Um, but there's a lot of, I mean, I've, been lo I've loved podcasts for like years at this point. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I listen to podcasts with, with uh, whatever, business founders or, or this and that, and yep. they tell their story. And I've heard a lot of, um, people say like, well, you got to find your why, and mm -hmm. you know that's really important. Standard. And then a lot of people too will say, and your why can't be money. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought like, why can't it be money? Mm -hmm. Like, it, I think that could it, maybe that can't be your why forever. That's the key. But if that's your why, and and I'm just speaking off of like what I think here. Mm -hmm. This isn't off of like, you know research or yeah. my own experience or whatever but to me it does make sense that if you're just starting out a business and of course it's something that you know you're always going to be somewhat probably interested in it mm -hmm. and there's going to be other reasons why you're doing it but if your main reason is because I want to make money and if you really go back to think of like let's say there's whatever a founder and he grew up in poverty mm -hmm. and he was never able to you know, buy the nice shoes that he wanted to buy, or mom and dad had to work multiple jobs, or they had to go to, you know, the food bank to get food, yep. and they never want to go through that again. Now, all of a sudden, they're, they're an adult, and they're like, hey, you know what, here's my idea, and my why is money, because I don't ever want to worry about money again. To me, that would make sense. I think the what you're talking about, I would position that more as a result of motivator rather than the main motivator. Tony Robbins actually goes through this very extensively about his personal life where he was like, I had $4 in my bank account. Yeah. He literally had $4 in his bank account and obviously his motivator was, I need to survive, right? Right. So I do believe mon money can be a motivator to get your butt moving for sure. It is a very good mo motivator. But your sole reason to start a company, in my opinion, the ones that started with money don't last very long. Mm. And, and I've seen that because a lot of times it'll lead to fraud, first of all, because, <laughs> because you're constantly right. trying to get more and more money, yeah. right? Um, and you're doing it in shorter spurts, right? Yeah. And so it'll lead to either fraud or you'll say, I have so much money, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Right. And you're going to lose the passion for that start. And if you do that, great. There's a lot of people that do it. Yeah. But I would say for the average Joe, you need your passion, your why needs to be behind the, like the, what you're starting to do and build. Right. Your result will result money. And I agree with you. you I mean, let's be real. That's all. Founders are like, we're ridiculous. Yeah. Like, we wouldn't do it otherwise uh, unless it resulted in right. That's higher always risk. a goal. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? It's always there, like high risk, high reward, right. right? If I go work for a company, I'm low risk, but I make the money, yeah. right? So I do think money is a motivator, but it shouldn't be your primary. Right. And that's where I always argue Because I've that. also heard as well a lot of, you know, these kind of really like multi-million dollar um, like people who have who have founded businesses and end up selling them mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they've come into a lot of money mm -hmm. they will talk about how quickly following that is like these bouts of like depression yep because they feel useless right and they've also kind of thought about this is how great my life is going to be once i'm able to sell this company for yep a hundred million dollars sure 
Like, I'm not going to have any stress anymore. I'm not going to have any anxiety. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see my wife more. We're going to be way more in love. It's completely We're, different problems. All of that stuff. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, you sell, you make whatever, let's say 100 million. Yep. And all of a sudden, it's your, your life isn't what you thought it would be yep. once you got to that point. Yep. And then on top of that, you've probably been working on this business round the clock for mm -hmm. probably years. Yep. 24 seven, let's say, because yep. you're probably dreaming about Must it too. Be real. Yep. And all of a sudden- It's a constant thought. It's actually a disease. Yeah, you don't have yeah. to do that anymore. Yeah. And not only do you not have to do it, you can't because it's not your company anymore. Yep. So even if you are thinking about it, you're not putting those ideas your in motion. Your brain literally feels like mush. Right. Yeah, it literally goes from being high productive yeah. to being not productive. Right. And then I told you where you like, uh, your values are usually like, I'm doing all these m like, tasks that I feel like I should be working for the grander vision, yeah. you all of a sudden don't have that guidance. Right. You don't have that beaming light where you're trying to run to. You're at the light and you're just like, yeah. what, what do I do now? And then, you know, your wife that maybe you've kind of neglect, like, you know, if you're getting to yeah, the yeah, point where it's course. like you're about to sell your, yeah, your yeah. business is getting to the millions. Yeah. It's like maybe now you have this wife that you've kind of neglected or this family that now you've neglected a bit. Back. Yeah. It's like your wife's, you're not coming home and your wife's madly in love with you the mm -hmm. way that you, she was, you know, when you first started and your kids aren't as connected to you as you kind of hoped that they would be. And you don't really have that friend circle because you've been so isolated yeah. for multiple years yeah. and so all of a sudden you're at home you're like geez you know like my marriage is kind of struggling a little bit and your friends are probably not the greatest friends because they're probably a lot of them are around you because of your wealth right who is my friend who's, yeah. who's not? real who's not yeah yeah right. so it's like all these other problems come in and then you're like what is my life yeah yeah so well on that depressing note <laughs> um being a founder is amazing it is fun it's a lot of work but uh but I would say there is a lot to be said about building something from nothing. Right. And that feeling has never eluded me. I think that's one of the feelings why most founders start their own thing. Yeah. Um, because again, you have to be crazy. You really yeah. do. Uh, it takes a special person to be a founder and, and not everyone can do it. Absolutely. Una, thank you so much for Thanks, being on this uh, podcast. <laughs> um, for everyone at home, thank you for listening and watching. Um, you can find us on Spotify, Apple, uh, Apple um, Podcasts, and YouTube as well. So we look forward to uh, having more of these fun podcasts. And uh, we really enjoyed uh, your intake on everything in terms of personality and mental and, and entrepreneurship life. Thanks, Seb. Thank you for being here. All right. Till next time, Corridor out. Thank you.